Hello and welcome to Clarissa K Explains It All, where we use this opportunity to share some time with each other and talk about the hot topics surrounding our collective consciousness. Hello and welcome, I'm Clarissa and thank you for joining me in this space where we get the opportunity to share some time with each other. And this week I have another amazing guest, amazing woman. She is Margaret Bell and she is a intuitive eating coach. So she, and and as an author, she does so much in the space of emotional connection with food. So we're going to dive into that today and see what is going on. So hi, Margaret. Hi there, Clarissa. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. Me and, my, me and Margaret met uh, through the Pink Link uh, yeah. networking um, and we just connected. As soon as I, I heard her vibe when she was speaking, I just knew I had to speak to her. And so here we are, we've got to this stage and your connection is connection and it happens when it's supposed to. So loving it. So Margaret, I've got a few questions for you today. <laughs> so what is your journey up until this point in your career? What, what's happening for you? Wow, my journey, oh, crikey, is quite a long one. <laughs> um, my journey with, I guess, uh, emotional eating and food as a whole probably started um, going a bit downhill when I was in my teenage years. Um, when I was 14, uh, I got bullied at school for supposedly being overweight. I wasn't, not at all, but obviously kids around that age can be extremely extremely cruel and this came from girls who I thought were my friends so I took drastic action into my own hands and decided I need to lose weight and lose weight quick so I went on an extremely restrictive diet only ate bread and drank water and that went on for about a year I went down to literally just seven stone and I'm five foot seven so that is yeah. very small I was considered you know virgin on the anorexic and around about I'd say about 15 and a half my mum got told that uh, she had lupus mm. which is an autoimmune disease so that kind of a little bit snapped me out of it I started looking into and this is obviously way before it got it got kind of trendy looking into likes of gut health and your immune health and how all that kind of come together when it came to autoimmune diseases and really started looking into her health and my health at the same time this progressed a number of years my dad unfortunately passed away in my 20s so that had another kind of knock-on effect to my eating habits I actually started binge eating at that point because I just couldn't deal with the emotions that were going on. Mm. I made the step of moving down to Liverpool about a year or so later. And I know now that was basically because I was running away from what was going on in Newcastle with my family and everything that was going on. So I was in a strange city with my partner. He worked long hours, so I was left at home, quite lonely, going through grief and bored. So I turned to food. That is quite an obvious thing for people to turn to because it brings you comfort temporarily and cheers you up temporarily. And I very, very quickly put on five stone. Didn't like what I saw in the mirror at all. It really turned into body hate, I guess you could you could really say. I tried both Weight, weight Watchers and Slim and World and whether or not they've changed these days, but at the time, I really didn't like them because there was a lot of naming and shaming if you didn't lose weight Mm. or if you put it on. That just didn't sit with me at all. I was there for help and support, not to be like singled out. So I pulled back from those because I really wanted to know what was going on in my head. And I also started to see a nutritionist as well. Basically, I could so I could really see what foods were good for me. Rather than following the diet, what could I do? And she really honed me in on what foods could keep me energised and fuller longer. And so as well, I started running at the same time, which really dealt with what was going on in my head. It gave me that time to kind of really process what I was thinking, because 
there's not many things you can concentrate on when you're running. <laughs> yeah, the mind, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, definitely. So kind of fast forward to my 40th, my 40th year. Um, I got divorced from the partner that I moved down to Liverpool with, and that kind of set off a spiral of things for me. I really couldn't be focused enough on my job at the time which was head of head of three departments I was head of account management head of business development and customer services so I really couldn't keep the focus going so I unfortunately lost that job and went in a depression at the same time everything was spiraling out of control and my eating habits really kind of spiraled out as well Mm. um, to the point where I didn't feel like I deserved to eat basically because my life had gone and flipped why should I have that right to deserve to eat that was what exactly was going through my head and I thought at that point well three friends as well I went to start seeing a counsellor who bit by bit built me back up and she said you know this is a turning point for you do you want to go back to being in that stressful situation with a job would you want to follow something that speaks to you and I chose the route that really spoke to me I'd always had struggles with food I knew a lot about what foods were best for me so I learned to be a coach and specifically in intuitive eating and looking into more of a woman's intuition and how that can really work when it comes to food and your emotions around food and bringing in gut health as well and I guess here I am today. (laughs) Margaret, that's so amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that part of yourself. You know, it's a very vulnerable space, but I also think, you know, so many people can relate to parts, you know, parts or even all of what you've gone through because you saw the the connection to groups of of women, you know, in in, uh, slimming events and, and how it correlates to when you were younger and those groups of girls, you're having a negative effect on on you and going filtering into your your emotions but also it really shows how much we are connected to food that we understand how much we're connected to food in an emotional sense we just we're kind of automated we just put it in our mouth and don't think about it but there is a real deep relationship with the food we eat yeah and I feel like you know the, the situations you went through it was food was the easiest thing for you to control, you know, because all these external things were happening that were outside of your control. You can't help the health of your mother. You can't help your your dad passing away, all those things you can't help. So food is the one instant thing that we can control, but it also heightens and lowers emotions, serotonin levels, all those things. We, the more we we chase after that serotonin, the more the, the cycle of this, this habit develops. So this is wonderful. Oh my gosh. It's such a, such an amazing story already (laughs) so that kind of answers what your drive the things behind it the um being inspired by your mum's autoimmune disease and um how that affect uh, her life because that that created a major stress on her body so you almost essentially wanted to heal her um, and by researching the things that she went through you're able to heal others so um, In the short term, what do you think was your biggest lesson for 2020? Because we had this space now and you're changing of your careers and getting this container. So what was it like for you in that space? Wow. 2020 was a heck of a year for me anyway. Um, My mum, well, my mum passed away just last year. So 2020 for me was an extremely emotional year, Mm -hmm. Um, not only dealing with my mum's passing, but um, I also, through that, kind of put myself in a situation where thinking, okay, your mum had a great life. She's always been there driving you. And that is when I really decided to, to one, go from a business mm. and as well decided to author a book as well to, to write and produce the book that I have so although my mum's passing away was an extremely sad and emotional time for me it's kind of given me that push that that drive to push forward and and really really focus on supporting and helping women who have been in a situation and are 
in a similar situation to what I was to to see a better way of life mm-hmm. and to to see past that blockage that they have and see that there is a happier and better future ahead for them 100% because you've had to deal with so much and you've you've just you've let it be a stepping board to just progressing forward you haven't allowed it to hold you back in fact you've learned greatly from it yeah. into education and so that is so wonderful so because your mom's passing you've you know you have to redirect that energy so now you're putting it into you know, helping to heal other, other women but it also balances you you know it also continues that your know, better relationship with food and self-nourishment self-worth oh I love this oh oh but I'm so sorry to hear about your mom but you just take it all on honey like you've just and you just use it as will and, and drive I love that so let's talk about um, your services now. So I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for you already because <laughs> I feel like you've already been a solution, but let's, uh, <laughs> let's talk about more what you offer as a solution in your services. The solution I offer, uh, I offer one-to-one coaching for ladies that really need that kind of extra support. So with my one-to-one coaching, we really focus on the emotional eating aspects there the triggers, the root causes, and then really see what the ladies do eat at the time without any judgment before moving on to actually getting their own intuition going again. We're all born with intuitive eating skills, as it were, but our parents, the best will in the world, want to get us into a pattern of specific eating times and as well I'm sure every woman knows this that we're, we were told when we were younger to finish what was on our plate and if we did finish what was on our plate quite a lot of the time we were all rewarded with more food and it's very often that these kind of eating habits where it whether it is restrictive eating or whether it is binge eating stem back to our childhoods so it's the unpicking of all of that before then delving deep into bringing that intuition back, understanding how intuitive eating works from the very basics, just by understanding what their own physical hunger actually is, and then understanding more about when cravings do occur. And then if they do still want to work with me longer, we then really delve into gut health as well, because they really do work hand in hand with one another for instance 80 percent of our serotonin is produced in our gut so it really does make sense to make sure that is working to its optimum health you know that is extraordinary because you you made me realize that um that we we've been we've been taught how to eat really from birth you know i didn't really think about the connection of you know um, we've got to eat at certain times of the day when we uh, do finish our meal, we get rewarded with a nice cake and custard or something like that. All these um, rewards, you don't really think about it. And then we've got the other aspects as well, your know, societal values on how we should be eating, new trends pop up all the time, images, beauty images that tell us how we're supposed to look and how we're supposed to feel. All of that, it's a lot to take on. It's a lot to take on. And some of those are huge, long journey life patterns that you've got to you know relearn unravel you know, understand why and I think because we're going into more this intuitive space we are having to also dive into this you know, into our whys into our why do we feel this way not just we're going to do it for the sake of it but why we're doing certain things what is the deeper yeah. connection oh oh yes I'm loving it thank you Margaret <laughs> So how how effective do you think some of the solutions you've had? What are some of your success stories? Wow. Well, there's a lady I'm working on at the minute and I had a session with her just this morning. This is her fifth session of 10 at the moment. She came to me first, second session. She was literally in tears. And I'll be honest, that is quite usual for clients that come to me because it's such an emotional connection they just don't know where to turn and by her fifth session which is this morning she is absolutely glowing Mm. absolutely glowing her judgment of herself has gone her acceptance of herself which is a huge thing for her 
is there and she now is understanding that she needs to be kinder to herself and not only that but her actual intuition is really starting to kick in she is asking the questions to herself and taking time for herself to really find out what is going on in her mind and body and that has really helped to stop her just automatically reaching for things I think you're right you know it's um, when you really really look at it and when you really listen it, that's the hardest part because you start to think, oh my gosh, you know, what have I done to myself? What is this doing for my life? You create so much judgment because again, our external says we're supposed to be a certain way mm-hmm. and we don't really, we don't really listen to ourselves in that way. So when we do, it can be hard to, like you said, you know, really accept. So it's such a great thing that you are a guide to others and because of your own experiences, you understand you are an expert in it you're an expert in the (laughs) intuitive eating so I think it's such a wonderful thing I was going to ask you what hurdles have you overcome in your life but you've you've overcome many I am like you could you're a champion (laughs) clearly is there anything else that you think that you could add you know to um, as another trophy of the things that you've overcome in your life I would say overcoming I'm a natural introvert whether or not you say that I don't know but I'm a natural introvert so overcoming that first panic I guess that all introverts can get when they go into new situations and believe me over the last year and a half there's so many new situations I've got into Um, but overcoming that initial kind of has been a big thing for me and I can honestly now say that it's just like if there's a new situation arising I just take it on. Yeah, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. I I, I knew that when I met you that you was an introvert because I'm the opposite. I'd say I'm an extrovert. I just, you know, behind the scenes, you know, working. But I'm definitely when I when I pop out, you know, I'm all there. (laughs) 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 But I I knew that, um, you know, our contrast would be a really, really good blend, you know, because it's a make me a bit calmer and I'll make you make you a bit higher so it's, it's, it's a really nice blend and so I'm really pleased that you've um, been able to get over some things and it's just not even a it's not really getting over thing it's more of a just expanding on who you are and letting it shine yeah. so do you think yeah. it's because of the things you went through in 2020 it kind of changed your direction and um, gave you a bit more drive into things absolutely absolutely um, I think that was weirdly enough probably the best time to start a business Mm. because the world was and never is going to be the same Mm. if a business can start and thrive and still be going that's just amazing in itself Mm. yeah I agree with you because 2020 March 23rd 2020 that was the official day of lockdown it was then I thought to myself I've got to take things seriously. I've really got to, like, if I've got this, uh, you know, product, online product, I've got to be utilising it in some way. And again, like yourself, um, can't be doing this by yourself. You've got to have a community of people who are like-minded, understand your direction, connect, and genuinely want to support. So this is why we're here today. You know, yeah. this, this is what's going <laughs> on. Beautiful thing, I love it. Is there anything else that you would like to add Absolutely. Um, Obviously, I do my one to one coaching and I do have my book, which is called True Taste. But on the other scale as well, I do offer a membership. So that is specifically for ladies who feel like they want to self coach. So it's much more of a of a journey for them. It's a 12 month membership where they do get um, a workbook each month to work through. They do get a 15 minute coaching session with me each month and we do have an ask the expert session each month as well and some of them have been phenomenal over the last year everything from a female PT when we were in lockdown showing us what we could use not necessarily having to purchase weights to meditation to breathing techniques to EFT tapping I've got um, a lady coming in talking on fermented food and how that's linked to gut health and then we have a hypnotherapist coming in as well 
in September. So I've already got things lined up. So yeah, there's there's that side, which is a, a wonderful kind of community of women that do come together and support one another so I've got two sides of the business there's the one-to-one coaching and the membership for women is there as well yeah and they sound both sound amazing so we'll definitely put the links in the description so people can go straight to your services so people listening and they are considering coming to you and want to know more what advice would you give them to start to make that plunge to start making that plunge, there's a course on my website, but what I'd really suggest is that they join my Facebook group, which is Emotional Eating Support UK. Then they can get a taste of how I work because I do go live within the group. I do ask a heck of a lot of questions mm. in the group as well to really get them thinking. Mm. And that is probably the best way to, to see if it's something they want to, progress from from there really yeah and what about um somebody who is going through the journey at the moment they haven't yet connected the the relationship between food and their their happiness what would you say to that person um if they haven't connected the food and the happiness together there's a few basic questions that i'd get them to ask themselves first of all when they're reaching for food it's a very simple question but it does get your mind thinking Am I physically hungry? Just those few seconds taken to ask that question might just stop you and just have you think, thinking about what is going on with you. I'm not going to say it's going to work 100% of the time, nothing ever does, but just giving yourself that few seconds to have a think and then really sit with the emotions that you're having at the moment and see what it is that really may need nourishment rather than you using that food that's true I completely connect with it because I recently went plant-based but uh, I mean I've tried so many things <laughs> so many things but at the moment it's plant-based I'm really happy with it but there has been times where you're wanting to change some habits and you can feel yourself reaching for something a nice cake why did I even buy it in the first place you know if it was just going to be a temptation for me it looks at me every time I open the cupboard or the fridge <laughs> And then you just think, no, no, I bought it so I could have it on this day as a reward. You know, it's again, it's that why I've even got that association with another a sweet treat. It's got to be a reward. It doesn't actually do anything for me in my gut health, but I can I completely understand it. So yeah, I'm going to be thinking about it a lot more. Great, this has been amazing. I'm going to again put your details in the description. It's been so wonderful to have you here, Margaret. I've just enjoyed it. You're very knowledgeable, very wise. And, you know, I just really hope it just blows blows up for you. And together we just grow. So, um, again, if you liked our connection, please share in the places where you care. And until next time, take care. Bye.